fight. Growing up, kid of the 80s, there was a place here in town that actually had it that was like the place to go whenever you were younger. It was called Putt Putt Golf. It was behind the Tallahassee Mall. When you went there, it had miniature golf, but it had the arcade cabinets there too. And it was one of the first places I got to play a game like this, the Ninja game. That was a four-player game. Three of my friends and I playing that game, amazing. It ate probably $20 worth of quarters, but just growing up playing something that we like is what made the game fun. Uh, you know, this is what really started it. Street Fighter 2 was the very first arcade game I remember playing as a kid. And, you know, they, they had versions on Super Nintendo, but it just didn't look the same. It wasn't as detailed. It wasn't as, you know, fun as playing on actual joysticks and buttons. It was, you had, you know, little pads and things, which are still fun and people can do it. But there was nothing like playing a fighting game on sticks and buttons. And at, at least back in my time, you know, it wasn't something that you, know, you could just go buy a stick and play it. It, it was a completely different experience than, than playing on a Super Nintendo. Why do you guys work to restore arcade cabinets? Like, why do you, what drives you to do it? Um, I often ask myself that question. I, I, I don't really know what drives us to do it. It's just we, we feel that a lot of these games, they, they came out at a unique time and they, they're meant to be played in a specific way. A lot of people don't really get that or understand why we do it, but you can play all these games on your phone, you can emulate it really easily, but there's nothing like playing a game from 1981 on 1981 hardware. It, it was made to be played a specific way. And the, the main thing again is that you, you have these people that walk in and you just immediately see them break down and have the, the best half hour of their lives. Because they, they may have put a high score on their local burger time machine back in the day. They come to our shop and they play that and then it brings back all those memories for them. One thing that I always like to talk to people about is people always like to talk about film like it's this beautiful art. And it is, right? But a lot of people, when you t try to talk the same way about video games, they laugh at you. But what a lot of people don't realize is if you look at the advancement of video games in such a short time, it's, it's in my opinion, it surpassed what film has done. So film still has its, has its rules, but if you look at Pong, right, and you look at a new Xbox One game, it, it doesn't look like the same media. It's completely different. So a lot of people, they, they don't take video games nearly as serious as an art as, as movies or, you know, anything really, you know, music, anything. It's, it, it's definitely an art. It's just, I think it's kind of new, so it's not quite got there. But I, I do think that's why a lot of younger people are really starting to get into them is they can appreciate the 8-bit and, and the art and all the, the iconic characters. And you see little kids wearing Pac-Man shirts. They have no idea what Pac-Man is, but they think it looks neat. So a lot of that 80s you know, style and, and nostalgia is coming back. And I think what it is for a lot of people is it's just those games that were made on those consoles are reminiscent of this time period uh, and this age for them. And it's, in a lot of ways, just... A, a respect for that age, you know? Now there's movies, you know, the, the movie Pixels, I haven't seen it yet, but that whole movie is based off of early arcade games. And you have the King of Kong, you have documentaries, and you have worldwide gaming competitions, and you have things like League of Legends, where millions of people play this game. And there's people that literally make a living just by traveling around and being good at a video game. Uh, you have services like Twitch that allow people to play a video game and, and broadcast it over the internet. And none of that would be around if it wasn't for early arcade games and console games. What's really lost in, in that transition is it, it's more of a social thing. So nowadays, you know, you, you want to play with people, you just go in your room and shut the door and go on the internet and play with people. And it, it's fun. I do it, you know, but you don't have that same feeling of walking up and putting a quarter on a machine where, you know, you, you're next and you, you get that right next to that person and play them. So it's you, you really lose that, that sense of being next to somebody and actually playing a game with them. If you can't see the person's face, then it's no point of doing it. I mean, they could be there playing nude for all you know, and it's gonna be like, I just don't wanna think about that now, but that's the whole point of the game, is you want to be with someone next to you, so you can actually, I don't know, are we allowed to cuss on this? That's the next question. Uh, probably not. So you can't crap talk with people. If you can't crap talk with people, then there's just no point in it, because all you're doing is just screaming at a screen. You know, in, in 20, 30 years, those kids of that time are not going to get to play arcade machines if people don't take care of them. I encourage people, you know, even if it's in a gas station and it's an old beat up game, you know, anytime I'm out in the world, even if it's a, a claw game, if you want that kind of stuff to survive, if you want to remember that stuff, put a quarter into it or put a dollar into it. Um, without, you know, putting your money into it, they're going to go away forever. You know, even if it's a, a stupid, you know, Miss Pac-Man machine at, at a pizza place. 
if you don't support that kind of stuff, it's going to go away forever. 